Welcome to How to Yu-Gi-Oh! Let's explain Yu-Gi-Oh!'s problems. Okay, so in this video I'm going to highlight some points about Yu-Gi-Oh!, the problems that it has, and my overall um, theories and just conclusions and all the evidence and using, uh, using Konami's past actions to determine what I think they will do in the future and how they will solve uh, these problems and hopefully they'll get solved. Let's get on with the rest of the video. 1. Generic negate extra deck monsters. 2. Lack of diversity. 3. Going second cards. And 4. Price to play. Let's start with topic number 1. 1. Generic negate extra deck monsters. Indeed, before I start on this topic, there's something that I need to say right now real quick. I believe 2020 was the year of refreshment, was the year of change. <music> As Konami realized during this year when the pandemic hit at this point that Yu-Gi-Oh was a game that was dying. They knew this and they launched Yu-Gi-Oh Rush Duels to try and bring in the new crowd. There was a general realization here that things need to change, we need to grow and we need to start hitting the younger audience as we see this, um, as we see this attempt here being done in the in the, in the scene for attracting younger players, especially in the Asian market, Asian continent, where Yu-Gi-Oh! originates from in Japan. Anyways, the point is, I feel at this time they looked at all the complaints that the majority of the Yu-Gi-Oh! player bases had, these four points, and have done their best. And not only have they done their best to address them, but they've done their best to eliminate them. And we see in 2020 going forward, the change in card design and policies were implemented. One of those was to stop creating generic negate extra deck monsters. Indeed, this is a complaint that I'm sure they have seen countless times, countless people, and I'm sure they've been seeing it in the community on a really huge scale and level that just negate extra deck boss monsters that are generic that every single deck can bring out are a serious problem. And so they stopped printing them. They just completely stopped. And we can see in 2024, they have, you can say they have printed a generic extra deck negate, which is that rank 10 uh, that's come out, or some have come out this year, but are they really generic? Can every single deck play them, right? And they're not really generic as only specific decks can play them. Not every single deck can play them. So they really have changed their ways. This is one thing that I need uh, to mention. So, But I, we do feel, though, there is still a problem. As a player who's playing this game, part of the issue is, is that cards from before 2020 are what are being abused and used now. Most of our problematic cards we have now, Negate Monsters, are from 2020 and before. For example, Appaloosa was a card released in 2017. That's sort of the case. Things like um, Baron de Fleur, again, was released before 2020. We start to find that these broken or really mass abused generic extra deck Negate Monsters, the ones that we're using now that people are that us as a player base are not do not like are from 2020 and before and are not from now from 2020 and after so that is definitely something that needs to be considered here and i believe konami is has addressed this issue and it's no it's actually no longer a problem going forward if we look at the archetypes that have come out from 2020 now if we look at the card pool now there exists no ex there exists no archetype or extra deck mechanic that introduces a generic extra deck negate for the last four years from 2020 till now we ha konami has not released a generic extra deck negate they have however released generic 
extra deck extenders they have released um generic extra deck one card combos however they have not released an agate the most they have done is no actually i don't really see it so yeah that's about it um so just in general just to say that generic ex negate extra deck monsters are being dealt with with konami and is something I think as a player base we need to um, acknowledge and I think this is something that's not acknowledged by the community at large because for the last four years we have not had a single generic extra deck monster in any current, in any set for the last four years that has been released by Konami. So, yeah. I think this is the biggest one to lack of diversity. Indeed, this is the case and this is something that is being combated right now i would totally believe you if it was not for all these words in fact it comes down to the first point because one of the reasons why diversity was such a difficult thing to have in the past was because we had a lot of konami kept releasing a lot of extra deck monsters that were generic and were negates this meant that boards tended to be be the same and you would only see the same cards all the time but we've noticed from the formats from 2020 till now we've i think it's only the last three formats we've had that have seen uh, an exception of we seeing the same extra deck but here's the thing even though the formats have been tier zero they've been extremely um diverse in the sense that we've had no negation true they've not been diverse in the sense that we've not that we've had the same decks three decks all the time but they have solved the issue of not having the gates although we've paid for it in another way and this is still a big major problem there is still a lack of diversity while it is a good idea from them to remove negates as a whole from the game and yes technically we can say right now even with snake eyes that the deck doesn't negate but playing on your opponent's turn doesn't necessarily mean that is not a negate in itself sure the deck sure these cards aren't saying no but generating a huge amount of advantage might as well be a negate in itself so yeah I think this is still I think this is a problem that hasn't been a, that hasn't been addressed by Konami and I think this is part of the big major reason why uh, players and and people such as myself are saying that the game not only lacks diversity but it's gotten really bland. Usually with Yu-Gi-Oh now the issue is is that if you've seen one deck you've seen them all. The play styles tend to be pretty much identical or the same um it's all about generating advantage above all else whether it's the end boards whether it's the place usually the philosophy behind the boards that are created usually fall around the same principles so yeah i think this is something that konami do needs to address and while we have addressed the first point which is generic negate extra deck monsters as they're not printing them anymore from as of 2020 till now um lack of diversity i think still is sorely lacking and definitely needs to be improved and we need to change how we do things here let's move on okay and so we have three going second cards indeed and i think this is part of the complaints i think we've had as a community i think this is one of the things we have been saying, I think, for a long time now, especially, and Konami has put this on board, especially in the TCG, they have been doing this. And when when players are confused and wondering why is um, Kestura Fenrir legal, well, Konami is listening to the player based on saying, you said you wanted a going second card, here it is. Uh, look at the current, look at the ban list that we've had since 2020, and we notice a recurring trend. Anything that can help the player going second is immediately released off the bad list. Whether it's the philosophy of cards that are being released, especially the last year. We have a card like Tupu Tactics Thrust that can only be activated when your opponent activates a monster effect. This allows you to add any normal spell or trap, right? Again, 
having that philosophy for going second we have lightning storm that can only be activated if you control no free sub cards again with the philosophy of going second we have Castor fenrir allowing you to in though it's even though it's in the Castor deck but you look at its effects and we see this recurring trend appear even more. Is the card broken? Absolutely. But with Castro Fenrir's effect, it can special summon itself, right? Can search itself. And when a monster effect is activated after that monster effect's resolution, you can target a face-up card and banish it face down. We start to see a familiar trend here. We start to see a favoritism for going second cards. And if we follow this, this, I do believe that in our next ban list that we'll have in the future or future ban lists, any card in TCG that helps with going second is never going to be touched if we follow Konami's philosophy here as they have done for the last three years or four, four years now as we're seeing right now. As they are listening to the player base, that, and one of the big major complaints in saying that you that there's no going second cards in Yu-Gi-Oh! In fact, if you look now at uh, 2024, the amount of going second cards we have in the game and are potentially increasing is actually insane. Yet the complaints from the player base still remain. So definitely, it's a lose-lose situation. And it's not that Konami has isn't listening, they are listening, and this one, I think... I think us as a player base, we are not being fair on this because they are going second cards in the game. They do exist. I think it's us as a player base not going to access them, not using them. I mean, we had a card released in Photon Hapanova, which was Waybridge. Was it bad? Yes, but we've had them. We have had going second cards. We They keep getting released all the time. You look at every, you look at most of 2023 and most of the cards that have been released, like 90% of the sets in last year, 2023, had a going second card. Whether it's SP Little Knight, that helps in going second. Typhon, that helps with going second. Um, you have Horus Package, again, that helps with going second or setting up your engine. You see the familiar trend. You see our engines like, um, what was it, Centurion as well. You, we're seeing loads of ways that Konami's releasing cards that help with going second. And it's ever increasing, right? Whether it's transaction rollback that's come out this year. The point, point still stands. Going second is being favored and is being promoted heavily by Konami. Whether it's in product release or in the ban list. So let's bear this in mind that Konami is tackling this on an active basis. And that's all I've got to say about this. Let's move on. Right? Yu-Gi-Oh! is the second most expensive card game to play. And in fact, it's sooner rather than later. I think Flesh and Blood is getting cheaper and Yu-Gi-Oh! soon. I think by the end of this year, might become the most expensive card game in the world to play. Yeah, Yu-Gi-Oh! is getting a really bad rep right now, and it's not good. In terms of price to play Yu-Gi-Oh!, it's pretty damn expensive. Um, You have the meta scene costing you an arm and a leg. It's absolutely insane right now, and it's not good. And so there are several things that need to happen here to reduce the price to play. While they have introduced Rarity Collection, right, uh, which is coming out, re came out, started, came out last year, and we have Rarity Collection coming out a bit early, two months from now, in May, I believe. And we have, for our first ever scene, we have the Megatins with an astounding coming out September 19th. But the announcement that they've announced is that they're going to be over 400 cards in our Megatin. That's right, this is the biggest Megatin they've ever done in TCG history, with the most amount of cards that they're giving to us as a player base. What, why is this the reason? I believe the reason they're attempting this, this is an attempt 
to try and curb from Konami's end anyway, the way I see it, is try to curb the prices of Yu-Gi-Oh product. In fact, they see that it is a problem and this is a huge gamble and attempt to do this. The principle is if there's more product of popular cards that people want, then in theory, it should bring those silly prices down. So that is the hope. However, whether this is going to pan out is something we will wait, is something we will have to wait and see for ourselves. So yeah, I think Konami in this year at the moment is making a huge gamble here with me Megatins, as this year is pretty unique unlike any other year in TCG and Yu-Gi-Oh! Anyway, as we have Rarity Collection coming out early and then a six months after, we have a few months after that we have megatins right so that's all i've got to say here about this matter so let's continue then okay so let's enter the conclusion well these are four points and these are four issues that kalami that we have with the game at the moment currently one has been solved which is the generic negate extra deck monsters. Do they exist in Yu-Gi-Oh right now? For, as of as from 2020, they do not exist. Any ne generic negate extra deck monsters that exist in the game now are cards which are from 2020 and before. Konami has stuck to the policy and stopped printing cards that ha that are generic extra deck negates and Yes, this year they have printed a rank 10. However, this is not a card that every deck can play. And we have, for example, with... And many people will say we have Beast of the Sp Spader coming out last year. Again, not every single deck can play Beast of the Spader. Yes, it came out last year, but you're not seeing every deck play Beast of the Spader. You are noticing that... With new products and with new cards that have been come out for the last four years, you're not seeing new generic extra deck monsters, just negate monsters anyway, appearing everywhere. Notice how with the community that the cards that we do complain about is nothing from 2020 and before. In fact, I don't know any complaint have I ever seen with Bestial Despada. I don't know anyone who complains about Bestial Despader. I don't know anyone who complains about SP Little Knight or the Horus package or even, um, you know, Typhon. How about Mirror Jade? No one's complaining about this. I think the only cards card we are complaining about at the moment is Albion. But again, we're only complaining about Albion because it, re it uses a card which was released before 2020. Seeing the see the current trend here, the point is is that most of the complaints we have from Yu-Gi-Oh right now are from cards, especially from the community anyway, are from are from cards from 2020 and before. Two we have, and two. What is the second point? The second point is we have a lack of diversity. I think this is something right that ties in with the price of the game. I think this is something that definitely does need to be addressed. While we have had, while we have had diversity in Konami's eyes, in the sense that we haven't had a generic negate extra deck monsters, thanks for that Konami anyway, but that doesn't mean as a community we wanted decks or advantage engines, that basically means that you can't play because the decks play on the opponent's turn. That was not the solution that we wanted either. We wanted fair and balanced decks okay so and archetypes anyway and play styles for that matter so while it is the right call it is the wrong direction and it's not something we are looking for so when it comes to lack of diversity i feel this is a f be honest with you this is an issue that is still prevalent in the game and it is an absolute failure and definitely needs to be improved upon and we need to see in the future how this is going to be tackled by Konami. We have uh, three going second cards. Indeed, this is an issue that I feel has been solved by Konami. We are constantly getting going second cards in the game. 
Um, this is something that we as a player base have asked for. Something that we have campaigned for and Konami has listened tremendously well. Uh, true, there have been some cards which are, I think, Triple Tactics Thrust when it was released. We were really questioning the power of this card. But it can't be denied that this is a card that helps in going second. Um, we've had loads of cards, loads, tons of cards that have released, especially in 2023, summarizing and hitting this point home of helping in going second. So to say that there's no cards in Yu-Gi-Oh that help you to go second is absolutely absurd at this point. And I definitely feel Konami has fulfilled this quota and everything. And finally, we have the price to pay. The price to pay Yu-Gi-Oh! is absolutely insane. And I feel this is where the danger is. And I think this is where the tipping point is, especially for this year. Yu-Gi-Oh! is or will become, by the end of this year, the most expensive card game in the world, right? It is absolutely insane right now. And I think this ties into the second point. It's a no, it's a knock-on effect. Because the game is so expensive, it starts to, it, the, it means it lacks diversity. Because it lacks diversity, it means the extra deck becomes generic, even though there are no negates. It's a snowball effect that one ish one big major issue infects another one, makes another issue worse, which then affects the first problem, which then affects everything else it's a snowball effect that if it is not solved right it you you becomes worse as a whole so definitely this is something that needs to be addressed asap in fact this is the biggest issue that needs to be addressed right now the price of Yu-Gi-Oh needs to be curbed down a lot and i think this is why the gamble on Megatins on releasing on having 400 cards in that set, right? The fact that this is releasing so many cards to hit the price of cards in the market, right? To try and just curb the absolute insanity of how prices have been for Yu Gi for a long time. We have to remember this is Konami in desperate mode. This is Konami reaching the end of their ropes here and they and they're looking for a serious win here they're looking to actually hit this issue where it hurts they've they're they've done it with rarity collection now reducing those meta staples down and they're trying this same approach with megatins right megatins usually have only had a have only had you know a set count or a card count of 100 or 200 but they're doubling it up to 400. They're trying the, quanti the quantity approach. If there's more cards on the market, then we can devalue the current cards on the market. The theory is, say for, say for example, um, SP Little Light is going for 100. But if there's 100 SP Little Lights in rotation, then in theory, SP Little Light, sh the price of it should go down dramatically. Trying to do the same approach that Megatins have, that Rarity Collection, sorry, has done for the game. As Rarity Collection releases every single card there in various rarities, in common, super rares, ultra, etc., etc., etc. So the principle is, is, is essentially supposed to be the same as Rarity Collection. Now, we, ha we do have some players being concerned, as you know, obviously, we'll have cards being short printed. But even still, um, I think Konami is a business. I think they're always going to do malicious practices. I think this is just something that's always going to be there. Uh, you know, but I think it's not going to be in their best interest to short print here. I don't think it's going to be in their best interest to do this. Because not only is it going to harm their bottom line, there are essentially other card games out there. Yu-Gi-Oh! already has a very bad rep right now in, for being the most expensive card games. In, expensive card game in the world. The, the sign of Yu-Gi-Oh! is really bad, especially this year. It's weak on every single front, right? It is dying, especially in the West. Um, the game is dying. There are other card games out there, you know? There's other choices, 
Yu-Gi-Oh is the weakest link. Whether it's with Lokana coming out last year, you have One Piece doing absolutely well. You have Magic the Gathering, right? You look on the Yu-Gi-Oh side of things, you look at every other you look at the card gaming circle, you look at the card gaming landscape, and Yu-Gi-Oh is essentially the weakest link. So if they fail this and if they botch this, well, they're going to die. And that's why I think they're not going to fail with Megatons. Not because they love us as a community, but because they have to survive. Um, right now, it's a, tro- it's, a, it's a point of survival right now. It's either live or die. And if they fail this, well, they die. That's all there is to it. That's all I've got to say about this matter. As I like to say, you are one step closer to becoming a Yu-Gi-Oh! Master. My fate, right, is in your hands.